This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? Today I'm gonna talk about headlights, automatic headlights, auto dimming headlights, and also uh, adaptive headlights. Are they good or are they bad? Can they help you? And uh, do they have any uh, problems, pitfalls you might be uh, careful about? So uh, there is one experience I had. Actually, it was technically it was a near death, death experience I had recently. So um, uh, it was on the 12th of February 2022. I was driving a BMW iX, uh, did the 1000 kilometer challenge, was driving through Sweden. And then on my way back again uh, for north in Sweden, in um, it was around Tarnum. It, this happened two, no, like four twenty at night. Right, well, car is met eleven percent of the arrival. That's still fine. We are actually, but we are not even halfway in this leg. Mm, yeah, soon halfway. So yeah, the first starting session was not good because we lost five minutes because of Colgate. Oh shit! Uh, I almost hit a moose. I was even eating when it happened. And then suddenly a moose appeared right in front of me. Uh, and I just reacted in time, uh, break hard first. And then I think I instinctively turned, did the, the moose maneuver. And then fortunately, I just hit the moose with the side mirrors. And the side mirror was just punched in. Well, there was no, there was no, no damage on the side mirror. It was just flipped in, poof, and that's it. Uh, I should have stopped right there. I stopped a little bit past it um, and I in inspected the mirror. It was okay. So I then assumed that uh, the moose was okay. So I didn't even call the police because I think other people probably call the police. Anyway, uh, but okay. So uh, fortunately for me, no damage, no harm done. It could have been fatal if I hit it straight on. And some people say, yeah, that was ninja reaction time uh, and so on. But I think it was a mix of luck, but also experience. Uh, because um, just by coincidence, BMW, Norway, they just happened to put some uh, central European tires on the iX. Very commonly, for example, this uh, Cooper Born that I have now, they have uh, Nuke and Hakkabrita R3. So very commonly, uh, car manufacturers or importers, they will put uh, Nordic friction tires on press cars. But uh, BMW, they just want to give the iX more sporty feel and they put that one. And it turns out to be quite good or lucky because you see now, on the, according to tire reviews, that um, the, the Michelin Pilot Alpine 5 has way better uh, braking uh, performance on dry asphalt versus the Nuke and Hakkabrita R3. So I guess that was lucky then, yeah. But also, I've met moose many, many times when I drive. I've been driving all over this. I drive actually roughly 100,000 kilometers per year. And I tend to also drive the same stretches like Österdal or many other places going towards Yalo. I drive the same stretches over and over again. And especially before when I did Nimber task, I also tend to drive to Bergen a lot and uh, Stavanger. And I've seen animals, especially at night. Uh, I know roughly where they appear. They, they tend to appear on the same places and they tend to appear right after sunset or at night. So I know roughly what to expect. And also uh, many times though, the, the animals are usually by the road, but it happened also one time I was driving Optimus Prime with trailer near Hoxun. It was raining, it was dark, and then suddenly I came around the corner and then suddenly the moose was there. Boom, I was like, whoa. <laughs> so, um, so I think my brain must have been trained over the years to react. And I, my brain will recognize the signature of an animal or moose. And that's probably why I reacted so fast. Uh, 
So yeah, it was a mix of luck and uh, experience then that uh, saved my life. Uh, but also, uh, what I noticed afterwards is that um, actually, when I look at the live stream uh, playback, one and a half minutes before that incident, a truck flashed at me several times, oncoming truck. And uh, again, I thought it was just false alarm or I didn't know what the heck it was. Uh, I thought it could be the, the adaptive headlights. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was that, but then it turns out to actually be a warning. But um, I counted that uh, that flushing happened three kilometers before I met the moose and I consider it to be a little bit too long. And normally when I see other animals and I warn other drivers, I would usually warn them if I, if I meet another car, let's say 10 seconds or 30 seconds after the, the animal, in, uh, I meet the animal, I will warn them. But usually I, I don't think I will warn them if uh, one and a half minute passes, then I consider it to be a little bit too long, too far away. And other people, they might be in some kind of high alert mode initially, but then they'd be like, well, there, there's nothing here, there's nothing here, okay. And then suddenly, ooh, you know, something like that. So I, I'm not sure, uh, it's just my uh, impression out uh, from it. But also you might be wondering, so what, <laughs> how the heck did the moose even get there? Because normally there'd be fences on the, each side of the highway, right? This is a, a, two, a four lane motorway. Yes, they have fences, fortunately, in, Nor in Sweden, in Norway, that might, might not always be the story. But in Sweden, they have lots of moose, so they have fences. But this happened right around an intersection. And at intersection, those animals can enter and get, get caught into the motorway, unfortunately. And uh, the, the problem also with the Swedish intersection is that um, we have street lights at the intersections. Uh, but not outside the intersection, and that uh, it actually it's actually bad for the automatic system. Uh, I'll come back to that. But um, uh, again, it's actually not the first time I've seen animals uh, at intersection. I also saw one time a deer by the autobahn in uh, Germany at night. So uh, I was a little bit shocked to see the animal because oh, what the heck? They have they have fences on each side, and there was ah. It's the intersection, of course. So intersections are a little bit tricky. So um, based on all this stuff I told you now, I'm gonna tell you the problem with automatic headlights. Many, many systems uh, will not detect oncoming traffic correctly, or it will turn off the head beam a little bit, uh, the high beam, sorry, the high beam a little bit late. I've seen this many, many times, for example, in Volvo, in Polestar, or in other systems is that, it keeps the high beam for, uh, I don't know, I feel like I want to turn off the high beam, but it turns off a little bit late and then it triggers oncoming traffic to flash at me. Uh, by definition, you, you're supposed to keep the high beam on until your light cone meets the oncoming car's light cone, then you turn it off. But I think high beams nowadays are getting more and more powerful so that um, people tend to switch off the high beam almost as soon as you see another oncoming car coming way far over there, which I consider to be a little bit too early. I mean, you sh we should be able to endure a little bit of a blind dazzling, uh, but just for safety for both of us. But also another problem with the automatic hi uh, high or headlights is that um, if you have an oncoming truck coming over a hill, you will usually not see the low beam of the truck. You will see the you see the top of the truck, and they have some somewhat dim headlights on the top. But then that's where the driver is sitting. So when the truck comes over that hill, you will blind the truck, and then the truck will then flash at you with full beams. <laughs> so that I, I've seen it so many times. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about, hopefully. Uh, so that's again a weakness with automatic headlights, and it's not only adaptive headlights. So there are two different things. We have we have the adaptive headlights, so also commonly called uh, matrix headlights, but you also have the, the automatic uh, headlights, which is only just on and off like Tesla has. Uh, and actually many other cars, they have it on and off, but then you also have the adaptive stuff that can turn on parts of the headlights. So, uh, and another problem with automated headlights is that it turns on the headlights way too late. Uh, again, per definition, uh, you're supposed to turn on high beam when you are two car lengths away from the oncoming car. So even before you guys have physically passed, you're supposed to turn on the high beam. So two car lengths is roughly 10 meters away from the oncoming car. 
uh, but then the, all the automated systems, they will usually turn on the headlights, I don't know, several seconds after we pass that car and then there could be a moose there, you know. Uh, for the longest time I was thinking, well, it's not that big deal, is it? Well, <laughs> it is big deal. Uh, if the moose is there at the wrong time, then seconds are really critical. Um, and also the last problem uh, with the automatic headlights is that they, they tend to turn off high beam when we have street lights. And that is the problem with uh, the intersection because in the Swedish intersection, at least on that stretch, we have no, no street lights uh, until we get to the intersection. And the intersection is, just the, the, is also the danger zone. And then we just happen to turn off automatically. The system will then turn off high beam. And that's what happened because when I was driving there, Oh, okay, street light, turn off the high beam, BMW iX laser light, you know, the, the, one of the best technology out there. But then the automated system turns it off and then it turned it on almost a little bit too late. Actually, when I saw the moose, uh, I think the, based on the footage, the high beam was still not on. So that, that is actually the weakness of the automated uh, high beam system, whatever you call it. Um, but does it mean that uh, they are, these automated systems are bad? No, they are, they are not. I mean, I just show you the corner case here in Sweden. In that scenario, it's actually bad. So, um, uh, but adaptive headlights in general, they are really good because uh, when you have oncoming cars, for example, a Tesla that doesn't have adaptive headlights, you will then have to turn off all the high beams and then you don't see anything until you pass it. But if you have like a Polestar or a car with adaptive headlights, you will at least be able to light up the side of the road where there could be an animal there while you have oncoming car coming. So adaptive headlights, in my opinion, will increase the safety of the car. I mean, of, of driving, uh, yeah, safety of the car, but driving at night. However, the problem is that in order to use that adaptive mode, you have to also be in automatic mode, which means that you have to let the car control on and off. Uh, and that means that you will also expose yourself for a uh, potential danger if the system is being tricked, like I explained to you. So um, is there a way to overcome this? Well, I think in most system, if you try to override it manually, uh, you will then disable the system or then you will go into manual mode instead or you will be in the high beam mode and then low. So, so that's the problem. You can't just override it temporarily for that intersection and then you go back to automatic. Or you, I guess you can switch it back and forth, but that's kind of cumbersome. People don't do that. So I would actually wish that uh, the systems would be better somehow if they can just, I don't know, at least turn on high beam more aggressively or maybe detect that we have street lights and that we don't have uh, oncoming traffic and then that it should have it on even even when we have street lights. I'm not sure how to solve this because I guess it's kind of hard for the, uh, the, it's hard for the automated system to, to think to be as smart as a human. I guess we just need some kind of AI here. Hmm. But okay, anyway, so based on all this, I have some recommendations. <laughs> and the, the reason why I made this video is to, I guess, have some interesting discussion about headlights because headlights tends to be boring, uh, actually based on the videos, uh, on the view counts on my videos. Headlights test, they get low view count because headlights are not sexy. Headlights are boring stuff. People want to see 1000 kilometer challenge. They want to see some acceleration maybe. They want to see range test, but headlights are boring until it almost kills you. <laughs> So uh, hopefully this video can then um, give you some insight and maybe um, make your brain think a little bit uh, and hopefully I can save a few lives. So um, uh, my recommendation is that you want to be careful at intersections at night, uh, like that, that signature or that, those uh, things I explained to you, uh, it will then trigger um, maybe a flaw, I would say it will trigger a flaw in the automated system. Just be careful, but then remember to ABC, always be careful. And I, I would actually suggest that use manual if you know that you are in an area with some wildlife 
Uh, I actually started using some manual headlights uh, at night in that those areas because I don't trust the automated system. I feel actually a bit scared around there. And another recommendation is to avoid eating while driving. I did a challenge <clears throat> and I shot video. So of course I should have spent the time eating if I didn't shoot video. So I can, I can kind of blame myself and I can blame the whole challenge thing for it. But uh, I guess what I've done in the past is that uh, when I do 1000 kilometer challenge, since I know I need to spend some time shooting video also during my charting sessions, then I tend to eat when I can and then not eat when I'm really hungry. And that kind of solves my problem. But for you, I guess you should try to avoid eating while driving at night. In the daytime, we have lower probability, but again, it depends where you drive, because if you drive in no man's land, then it's fairly safe in the daytime. But at night, uh, the problem is that at night, animals are more active, and also at night, you have poor vision because of the limitation of the car, pretty much. So that's why. Uh, but again, if you're also driving in an area with, uh, lead, with street lights, like many, many places in Norway, fortunately, they have street, light, street lights at night. That's actually super safe compared to Sweden. Many people also wonder from time to time, why do they have any street lights on the motorway? Uh, is it just a waste of money? It's definitely not a waste of money. It's highly safe uh, to have it there. But okay, <clears throat> and also another recommendation, it's kind of weird for me to say this, but you should always try to keep your eyes on the road, okay? Even if you, you munch on a banana or something, at least, fortunately for me, uh, I had my eyes on the road all the time, even though I was eating something, you know, uh, just keep it there, like you you, you have some kind of staring down, you, you, you're doing the whole, uh, what are you going in the wild, wild west, you know, you never lose sight of the opponent, always keep it there in sight, yeah. Uh, okay, um, but also I would say that you have to be extra careful uh, right after sunset and at night and maybe at dawn, but especially right after sunset and, and night, then I've seen so many, many times, this is based on experience after driving. Oof, how many, are we getting close to 1,000? No, are we getting close to 1 million kilometers now? But I've seen this so many, many times that uh, usually on those times, the, the animals are way more active in daytime. Uh, I don't know why it's like that, but just uh, maybe it could also be because um, we have lower traffic in, at night and then they tend to, yeah. But okay, uh, and also last thing, but uh, it doesn't apply to many uh, cars. Uh, if you have some kind of night vision you can spec when you buy the car, then I would suggest if you can afford it, get it. Because I haven't, okay, I don't have a first-hand experience, but when I, I, I read about this on uh, the Audi e-tron group, the fat e-tron group in Norway, uh, some people, they, uh, they got that option, night vision. I actually had it in my BMW E61, but I think it wasn't that sophisticated. It was from 2007, six that, that one. But at least in the newer systems, like in the Audi, and I would assume also in the other German autos, um, it will warn you. That's what I heard, I read it. Um, it will detect animal and give you some audible stuff or something uh, in the screen and warn you that there's a danger there. And that could be life-saving, really. So if you can afford it, get it. I'm not sure if other systems will be able to detect animals like that. Uh, there was also, yeah, lots of discussion after the video that, oh, but the Tesla would be able to break, right? I'm not sure about that, if Tesla can detect that uh, that animal. Um, fortunately for Tesla is that they don't have, they don't have adaptive headlights. So at least for me, when I'm driving Tesla, uh, since we don't have adaptive headlights, then I use manual. I always, I've been using manual headlights for the longest time, since Millennium Falcon's time. Well, uh, even Millennium Falcon and, and those other Teslas I had in the past, and also many press cars, they have uh, automatic, uh, like auto dimming lights, which is just on off, but I don't use those systems because uh, they tend to uh, blind oncoming traffic and then uh, the trucks flash at me. So that's, that's why I use automated, uh, I mean, sorry, I use manual on off. And I think actually that helps many times because then at least for me, I, I'm more aggressive on putting on the headlights when I should all the time. And yeah, so anyway, 
long chat for me but um, hopefully this was useful for you and then hopefully <laughs> you will be more careful about uh, using automated systems because they are like I said really good but they can also trigger some uh, potential dangers so uh, I want to know what you guys think huh is this just bullshit or does it make any sense and then how can car um, or automakers or uh, those headlight uh, makers improve this is there any way to improve this? I mean, a human, a human can drive better or use the headlights better than uh, a machine, right? So the machine should be able to match the humans or maybe even surpass it. Okay, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.